I had subpoenaed the CPS worker and the friend of court worker. Excuse me? We yeah, subpoenaed and then CPS and we adjourned because uh, Mr. Richardson, you had a witness to present who was a friend who was unavailable at, at that time to the work. Ms. Gonzalez Dean, you needed to present the front of the court, which the court would like to hear from, which is why we gave that indulgence. But Mr. Richardson, we'll start with you. Do you have your witness here? Yes, Courtney should be here. I just sent her the info for the Zoom meeting. Is she here? Well, let's find out. Yeah, well, she's here. Then let's bring in his witness. All right, Courtney, my first question for you is, how do you see me as a father with what you've seen with my son and whatnot? Um, so, I mean, it's, you're pretty family oriented with like, um, uh, especially to do with like your son, we do a lot of like family dinners together. Um, there's been like a lot of times that like you've taken like your son and my kids to go play outside. Um, you're just like really there for him, um, giving him what he needs, the attention he needs, um, the needs that he needs, um, stuff like that. All right, my next question for you is, um, do you consider me to be a caring and compassionate father that cares about his kids? Yes. Um, I think it's some more questions here. Uh, you know, I had a whole bunch from loaded up, and now that I'm here, I'm always so nervous. I always get like that. Um, Take a deep breath. We'll get you through this. That's the whole point. That's why I've been so patient with both of you, is to try. Exactly. Exactly. Look, this is your child. I am just trying to make a decision based on what you present to me as evidence. It's never easy and it's never perfect. You will always know your child better than I do. So take a deep breath, ask these questions, and give me the evidence that you can give me, please. Uh, Courtney, I ask that of both of you. <laughs> Courtney, do you feel that I'm capable of being the proper father for my daughter like she needs right now? Absolutely. All right. Um, now, you weren't there for much of my bad times, which I struggled through, but you've seen me since I've been post-recovery. And how, how would you describe me since, you know, I've been living next to you and whatnot and we've been communicating regularly? How would you describe my, my parenting style, my, my relationship, my family, just my general way about me? Um, you've been uh, pretty present, um, making sure that you're there for um, not only – um, Timothy's needs and Timothy's appointments, but I've even seen you like take time off of work to be there for like Ellie. Um, so you've just really been present in um, the children that you're around right now. And I feel like you would also be that present with Valerie as well. Um, okay. So in. Continue, finish that answer. Okay. So um, in addition to just being the present, um, you're being present um, you're just making sure that um, you're fulfilling all the needs that they need. Okay. Um, something in your answer kind of reminded me, normally people ask, what's the relationship between the parties? So how do you know the parties, ma'am? Um, so he is in a relationship with my best friend. Okay. Yep. So when you talk about other children, they're your best friend's children? Yes. Yep. He um, lives in the home with my best friend and her daughter and okay. their shared son. And are you a neighbor then too? Yes, I am. I actually moved her out here with me um, maybe six months ago. Okay. Forgive me because it does make a difference how the relationship is. Yep. So you're not his significant other. You're the best friend of his significant, significant other. And Correct. when you talk about the kids, you're talking about her kids, not your kids. Correct. I mean, he's definitely been a part of like my kids' life as well. Um, we do like I like I said in one of my answers, we do like a lot of uh, family dinners together. Um, so we rotate like who cooks on which day. So like they might cook one day, I might cook one day, and we all sit down and have family dinner together. Okay, so you have a neighbor that you're a good friend with, who's the best friend of your current significant other who lives with you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. I kind of needed that connection. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't I no. That my apologies. Well, no, no apologies necessary. You're not an attorney. I'm trying to treat you like an attorney. And the same with Ms. Gonzalez Dean. So, but at the same time, I'm trying to make all the connections that are necessary to make this decision.
So please proceed, Mr. Richardson, and question your witness. I don't know how to quite word this right, so I'm just going to kind of kind of say it and see if you express your opinions on it. But um, so Valerie, as you know, I haven't seen her. Is missing out on more than just me. She's missing out on her whole family. Um, my question to you is, you know, as the daughter of one, a mother of her uh, best friend, your daughter, Aria and Allie, um, do you feel like the rest of the children really miss her because they haven't seen her? I mean, is there anything you can give examples of just showing that, you know, she's not just missing her dad, she's missing her whole family is kind of what I'm getting at. Anything you want to say on that? Um. So it's just, uh, it, it's kind of a very unfortunate circumstance and everybody's kind of missing Val. Um, she was a pretty major part of the family. There's been even times that I have went out um, and done things with Val. Um, and you can definitely see that uh, the people around that were around when she was are hurting from it. Uh, my own daughter asks about Val all the time. Um, so it's definitely affecting multiple people not having her around. Um, is there anything else you would like to say or add, Courtney? I mean, feel feel free to. Uh, just just any any more thoughts on you know why you feel like I've I've gotten to the point now where I I should be able to see my daughter again. What what have I done to really prove that to you? And you know what do you see in me as a capable father that says I'm I'm ready to see her again? And you know not just me, but like like you said, her her sisters, her brother. Her sorry, sister, her brother, and like you know, her grandparents suck. We all we all miss her. You know, we all want to see yeah. her again. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so the only thing I really have to say is, um, I've definitely seen the strides, um, since you've, especially since you've came to Reed City, um, you, I wasn't really around for like the bad parts of anything, um, but even going back to, um, when you guys lived out in Grant and I was around around those times. Um, you were out, uh, doing a lot of work and you weren't really present and you weren't really around for a lot of things. Um, and now coming to Reed City and being sober and all of that, you're here every day. You're, you make sure you're here for dinner. You make sure that you're going to conferences, you're going to doctor's appointments. Um, you're, participating in the family dinners by making dinners, um, taking the kids out to the park. Like you've really stepped up as a parent. Um, and I definitely think that uh, Val also needs to experience that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I guess that's, that's really all I have. So my whole point with, uh, with this witness was to just kind of say, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, doing good I'm, and we miss her and then it's not just me that miss her it's the whole family miss her and i feel like I've, I've got my point across with that and you know like i said I, i'm putting work first i mean not left putting family first not work first like i used to yep all righty miss uh, gonzalez dean if you got to cross examine this witness um you said he takes time off for ellie's appointments but at what point did he get a job that was full time where he had to take time off now? Um, he is currently working for a roofing company. Right. Um, is that the roofing company that the boss was kicked out of his home previously? No, I don't. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, and then. Hmm. I don't know how to state this question. I guess I was, this isn't really a question for you, more so. Um, She's the witness her, on the stand, so you have to yeah, question the yeah. witness that's there. Yes. Um, when would you say that Timmy moved in permanently across the hall from you? Um, I would say, what are we in? We're in October, so it was probably close to the end of, I got a I got a math back my month. <laughs> uh January, February, March, April, May, June, July. I would say probably about the end of uh July, beginning of August. Okay. So in the time that he was abusive to your best friend, did she ever come to you and say that, hey, we need change? What do you think we should do? 
were there ever options of counseling that she ever spoke of or is it just hey he's changed now um I wasn't really present for that um she wasn't uh really keeping me in the loop about it um so I can't really speak on that a whole lot and so, when well hold on when was that ma'am let me give a timeline here for, for the abuse yes I I'm not quite sure I know that uh, in the past year the past few months um I would say maybe like the past like year like I said I don't know much about it so I can't really speak on it okay so how are you able to speak to it now I can speak on how much he's changed from back when he lived in Grant to now not on the abuse or anything like that, but I can speak on how he's present in the children's lives now. And what timeline is that? I'm sorry. I'm some people forget the timelines. I, I have people that testify to stuff like this and it's five years old. So and this, sometimes it was last month. So yeah, for sure. I get, I get that. Um, so there was a pretty um, big gap um in communication between me and my best friend when she moved out to Muskegon and when was um, that again timeline that that was I'm I'm trying <laughs> uh, that I'm was, asking for approximates like months seasons or ye and year so she moved from Muskegon about six months ago so six months ago she was back out in Muskegon before that um she was living in Grant and that was maybe a year ago Okay. So this is, I, I, there was like a year gap between me being around them. Okay. So you only have, your testimony is from the, for the past six months. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Now that I have a timeline, please continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, do not apologize. Um, look, let's hope this is the first and only time you ever have to testify in court. Yeah, for sure. And it's a stressful situation. You have two parties who are trying to elicit testimony. Yep. And, you know, they don't, because they're not represented by attorneys, they don't realize what's pertinent to the court. I'm trying to decipher timelines, activities, incidents, and that's why I needed the timelines so within the past six months. Okay. Ms. Gonzalez Dean, you're on cross examination of this witness. Please continue. So within the past six months, you guys have reconnected. Yep. Um, but if you're her best, were you her best friend, would you say earlier this year or just within the past six months? I've been best friends with her for about 10 years. Okay. So as her best friend, you not knowing these things within the past year that happened just in January, how do you think, what gives you a, sorry, I'm trying to word this in a good way. Um, how do you know what? happens behind closed doors is not the same as six months ago what if it's just you know being best friends again and it's nice to see you I mean she didn't tell you in the, earlier this year why would she tell you now um because I am with them every single day from the moment that uh Timmy gets home from work I get from work get home from work we are pretty much with each other from dinner time because we share dinners every single night until we all decide to go to bed. And then I think that's about it. For now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no all problem. Right. So you're not his current girlfriend, correct? No, I am his, uh, his, his girlfriend's best friend. Oh, okay. Don't, don't mind me. I mean, relationships are just, I know. And Different. it's kind of a weird circumstance, too. It's just kind of a well, we talk about the family dinners. It's a way to save money. <laughs> well, and, and that's why I asked, because you yep. said you eat together every night. Yep. So I'm trying to establish the relationship here. Yeah. And I've dealt with some different relationships. There are many <laughs> people that have polyamorous ones. Uh, oh, there are yeah. people that have no. Not, well, no offense, not polyamorous, but there are <laughs> people that have very, very close relationships where they're a family despite what everything else is. And it has nothing to do with relationships that ever, it has everything to do with, hi, we're all together. We're trying to make this work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're trying to get through life. And that sounds like where you're at. 
Yep. Is that correct? So you, yep. you guys eat every night. Mm -hmm. Who prepares the meals? Um, we alternate meals. So um, one night, me and my boyfriend will pre prepare meals. The okay. next night, her and Timmy will prepare meals. Um, and whoever prepares the meal will eat at each other's houses. And how many children do you have? I your... have three. All right. And Timmy has how many? He has um, Timothy and um, Valerie. Um, and then his girlfriend also has a daughter named Ellie, who he is present in her life as well. So whose home do you meet with the most? Um, it it goes in between both. It's just whoever ends okay. up making dinner that might, that night. Yeah. Yep. Forgive me. I'm just trying to set up the scenario here. Yep. <laughs> and so who uh, cooks the most? Uh, we alternate every single night. Does Tim do any of the cooking? He does every once in a while. He has started. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. Oh, he just started. God help you. I I, I'm in the uh, <laughs> bad cook. My daughter, my daughter used to make fun of me for burning mac and cheese. So I'm in the you know, bad cook. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. I'm trying for the kids. Hey, you know, that's all that counts is that you're learning. Um, to me, I was a bio, my background's biochemistry. So the kitchen Got is it. nothing more than a lab to me. So that's my <laughs> kitchen. Yep. When my wife and I first got married 33 years ago, I'm the one that chose everything that went into the kitchen because she had no no clue. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, food oh, yeah. is food is what connects us. It does. And the fact that you've got somebody, Tim, that you're meeting with, even nightly. Um, I was just wondering how much you did of the cooking and what you did of the meal prep and who does if, all this. If I, if I don't cook, I do the cleanup kind of thing. So I'm always going to Well, that's, again. yeah, that's the typical. I still do the cleanup whether I cook or not. Uh, God help me when my daughter prepares meals because then I'm, every dish in the house is used. She's 24. God help us. <laughs> but um, teach your kids well. And that's yeah. one of the skills to teach. You have to eat. You have to take care of the home. I asked the question because I'm trying to establish the relationship. Yeah. So forgive well, me for the intrusion. No, completely right. fine. <laughs> Understood. All right. Um, Ms. Gonzalez, Dean, you were done with this witness um, at this I point. Think... Yes. All right. Mr. Richardson, are you done with this witness? Um. You may ask more questions, yeah. and then Ms. Uh, Gonzalez Dean gets to cross examination, uh, gets the cross exam again. Uh, I, I think I think I'm pretty much good. Um, I don't okay. want to drag on too long because eventually here, pretty quick, my crew is going to get done working, and I'm going to have to get in the truck phone. I don't <laughs> want to threaten you with that. So <laughs> understood. Well, work is work, and that's one of the reasons we do it this way. We interfere with work less. Ms. Kirkendall, yeah. thank you for your testimony, and yeah. may you guys continue to share those meals. Oh, because absolutely. <laughs> they are important and they are wonderful. Yeah. And hey, explore. You never know. I'm well, I, I'm I happy to learn. Question. Oh, certainly, Mr. Richardson. Um just to kind of show my, my the whole family being dedicated and happy to everything that's Val come. Um you've been noticing we've got everything for Val's room ready to go, everything set up. I mean, we just describe the amount of effort that me and Jordan and you all come and steward together have been kind of closely putting in to drive all the way back to Grant to get Valerie stuff and just like uh, I had it worded really good until I just started saying it. So okay. I kinda of, kinda of lost. I guess, right. guess never let me let, let me Jordan let me ask a question that may sum together. this all up. All right, Miss Kirkland, you've known Mr. Richardson has some problems in the past with yep. issues. And I won't go into them totally, but do you feel safe with him around your children? Absolutely. There's been multiple times that he has watched my um, children under just the supervision of himself, and I feel comfortable with that. Okay. And you would feel it's that he would be, be and you would feel that he would be safe and comfortable with any child. Yes. Do you think that he would be a good parent to a child? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, have I missed something? No, nothing at all. Ms. Gonzalez-Dean, okay. they're just questions. I'm trying to make sure, remember, parenting time is ordered by the court, and it must be ordered by the court in some way, shape, or fashion in the best interest of a child. Yep. I'm trying to make sure that we have a witness here who has ex witnessed him with children, that 
he, she feels that he would be comfortable around children, including your child. Forgive me, but that's a pertinent form of information. Now you may cross-examine on that. And that's what I was going to open this up for. No, I was questioning because he said they're very excited about the outcome. They already have a room ready for her. I, I get not- that. I get that. And that may or may not be the outcome. That's why I'm questioning whether a person who's seen him with children and trusts him with children is feeling okay with him with children. That's why I'm going to open up this for cross-examination by you, Ms. gonzalez I um, mean, there are many issues in this case. No, and I, I have to deal with them. Here again. I just wanted to say that we're getting... Well, the whole, the whole uh, my, my thing is, is the court, the law presumes that parenting time will happen, but it must happen in a safe environment and with a person that the law deems safe to be there. There's a presumption of safety, but there's some evidence here that there's concerns. And I want to make sure that the court gets to address those concerns. And that's why, Ms. Gonzalez Dean, you may quash, you may cross examine this witness. It was a pertinent question because that's what's pertinent here. I, I need to know if it's safe. Um, my question was were my two witnesses here today as well? They were. I don't here. know. We're going with his witness, so we're, we haven't gotten to yours yet. Okay. Just wanted to. I mean, because you're, you went first. So we went with his witnesses and her, his witness wasn't present last time and neither was yours. So we're going to get to that momentarily. Okay. But right you. now we have this witness on the stand to cross-examine by you. So you may cross-examine this witness, ma'am. So when you guys say that you're there all the time, um, are there ever times that you all go out as adults and what do you guys like to do? Um, we really don't get a chance to go out as adults. I, we, I, I'm technically a single mom of three. I, I mean, I have my boyfriend, but, um, I really don't get a chance away from my kids besides them going to daycare. Um, so we really have not done anything as adults. Um, every time we do go out, um, we do go out with kids. Um, what would you say? the dynamic is between Timmy and Timothy with um, schooling. Are they working on that with him, do you think? Um, Absolutely. Um, He does go to daycare. um, So he is getting a lot of um, the schooling that he needs from daycare. Um, But there's been multiple times where um, he's came home. Timothy has came, Timmy has came home from work. And uh, he'll sit there with Timothy and they'll uh, read books together. They'll sing the alphabet together, um, stuff like that. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much what you primarily focus on for preschool. So um, I would say that that's helping towards his schooling. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with someone that was abusive to their significant other? Absolutely. I dealt with it myself. Okay. Would that be with your current partner? No, that was with uh, my children's father. Okay. I was just curious. Yep. Um, not to cry too much, just no, curious. You're fine. Mind. You're fine. Sometimes watching those behaviors in certain people, you can see those in other people. Yep. Um, and just curious. I mean, you see him now, but when he gets upset, what is his go-to? Does he have to step away? Does he scream? Is there holes in the wall anymore kind of thing? Um, I mean, I've definitely seen him get um, a little frustrated sometimes, um, and I've noticed that his biggest go-to is he'll just step outside and smoke a cigarette. Okay. And all he's doing out there is a cigarette? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, Does he ever drink by chance? I've never seen alcohol in the home. Okay. Um, And the smoking is definitely outside of the home at this time. Yes. Yeah. He's known smoking in the bathroom with a vent on kind of thing that you know of. You no, guys don't we, uh, we get regular inspections. Um, we would get evicted if somebody was smoking in the home. Gotcha. Okay. That was my next question. Who was doing the inspections? But I get you. It sounds like. Um, we live in low income housing, so it's by the state board. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then in the past, um, Timmy had a big problem with waking up. I'm not sure if it was his past um, 
habits or if it was, you know, third shift or Mm -hmm. just lack of, you know, time scheduling. Do you see him getting up early in the morning slash is Jordan still doing the waking up of him or do you see him more independent and them as co-partners versus her putting everything and having to do everything? Um, I mean, I don't see the actual like morning routine because I'm not there. Um, but I do know they're out the door every morning by at least 5 a.m. to get him all the way out to work um, so that mm. she can get back to get Ellie to school. No offense, Miss. No offense, Miss Gonzalez, Dean, but I don't expect her to be in the house on the morning routine. But no, you know, you can you can you can ask him ask her about is the kid on time for the school routine? Not every day, but she had mentioned that they're together all the time. Correct. And yes, I agree. I was trying to keep this a little light. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, um, pro- no, don't apologize. Like I said, you know, I have a lot of people that butt heads and call each other names a lot. And if I can keep it somewhat light and realize that, yeah, she did testify. She's around a lot. So I would expect her to understand maybe that she sees the kid in the morning routine in the fact that he's at school on time or at the bus stop. Exactly so I'll let you continue, please. <laughs> I was asking about the behavior of the dad, which is what we're here for. Correct. That's all I had to say. All right. Any other questions, ma'am? I didn't mean to cut you off or stop you. I was just trying to add some levity to a really bad situation. You know, I don't expect her to be there while they're cooking breakfast. Uh, I mean, they said they shared meals. So, yeah, I know. Well, you know, I, I guess that should happen. Miss Kirkland and Kirkendall, have you ever uh, been there for a breakfast presentation? Um, No, I usually work a lot of early mornings. Um, okay. So dinner is our best bet. <laughs> okay, well, maybe ask for breakfast next time, you know, uh, maybe some <laughs> crepes. Yeah, Fair maybe enough. some maybe some crepes, <laughs> a couple of pancakes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but to your knowledge, the child is when the child is with his father or with the father, um, they make it to school, they make it to the bus stop on time. Yep. Um, do your so kids little, have the yeah. same, do your kids have the same bus stop? Um, so we actually live on um, too close to the school. Um, okay. So we don't have a bus stop. We have to take our children to school. So do you take them together? Um, no, we we drive separately. Usually she will go straight from dropping Timmy off at work to dropping Ellie off at school. Okay, but to the best of your knowledge, you've, you've experienced the fact that the child gets to school on time. Yeah, there, every day I pass right by her car dropping my own daughter off. Okay. Sorry, Ms. gonzalez Dean. I just wanted to get more specific about that and forgive me for the sideline. I, I Like I said, I watch a lot of people call each other names and demean each other. You guys really haven't done that all that much. And I wanted, I know, no, it's not worth it. And I thank you for both being very upfront, but I was trying to keep it within the spirit of this and the fact that, yeah, you're right. She's been with dinners. Maybe she's seen breakfasts and I thought I'd, all right. Sorry, I had motions this morning. They were really nasty and bad. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to keep the two, all of you, keeping a decent relationship. Mr. Richardson, any more questions about this witness? Um, following up on one question that Sheena asked and kind of expanded upon, she was wondering about how, you know, you can tell abuse and whatnot. And you mentioned that you were in an abuse relationship. Would you like to expand upon your relationship with Cameron and how your relationship, Cameron being the fa- mother of uh, father of her children and why you are a perfect person to kind of not not that i need a watchdog by any means. i'm not saying that but to be a person that would be able to spot signs immediately because of what happened with cameron can you go into detail about how you experience what you experience with her means that i couldn't get anything past you not not that i you know i'm trying to or nothing like that but like do, 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 do you yeah. elaborate on that a little bit for me i'm having trouble yeah so i mean here. um i was in a relationship with uh my children's father for close to 10 years. Um, he was extremely abusive. He laid his hands on me, he laid his hands on the kids. Um, and it got to a point where, um, we ended up having to flee the house. Um, but with that being said, um, it does make it very easy for me to, um, spot, um, abuse that's being done. Um, whether it's, uh, just flying off the handle because you're angry or, 
uh, clenching fists when you're angry. Um, there's just like a bunch of signs that I've picked up uh, myself being in a re- an abusive relationship for so long uh, that it, it's pretty hard for me not to catch on to those. And do you see any of those signs in me? I do not. Mm. Um, I don't know if you remember this incident, but it's kind of proved how much of a watch hog you are on me. But do you remember the glue stick incident in the kitchen? The what? The when you found the glue stick in the kitchen. Glue stick? You thought it was something else? Oh, yeah. Yep, I do remember. Would you, would you care to describe that story and just kind of prove how, you know, on top of it you are, like, Again, not that I need the watch fire or nothing, that it's just another layer of security I have, you know, just to know that thou's safe no matter what kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. so I had walked into, um, so in addition to my um, children's father being abusive, he also was a meth addict. Um, and I had walked into the kitchen one day um, to help with dinner, and I had <laughs> seen something on top of the pantry, um, and it looked like a meth pipe. And so immediately I picked it up and I was like, Timmy, what is this? And he kind of walked into the um, kitchen and just kind of giggled at me. And he was like, it's a glue stick. And I kind of like looked at it in depth more and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Um, But it's definitely something I caught real quick. And I was immediately like, hey, what the heck is this? And that was at Mr. Richardson's house. Yes, that was actually within like the last three weeks. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Mr. Richardson? Um. Uh, no, not really. Not for her directly. I have some stuff I want to say at the end, but that's about it. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, Miss Gonzalez Dean, is there any cross examination on that testimony? No. Okay. In that case, Miss uh, Kirkendall, you are released. Welcome and thank you for being. Thank you. And forgive my bad sense of humor. I just try to keep things light because. Forgive me, I watch a lot of people butt heads and just... You kind of have to in your field of work. <laughs> yeah, I do 30 to 70 hearings a week. It sometimes gets really bad. And I had a bad morning, so I was trying to keep it lighter. And maybe right. my sense of humor is just obviously not that good for being a geek. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> but in any event, okay, Mr. Richardson, that was the last of your witnesses, sir. Yep. Miss Gonzalez-Dean your next witness i know we reserved on yours um i had subpoenaed the cps worker and the friend of court worker all right miss levey are they present i don't have anyone present um, but I, you did subpoena them miss gonzalez did you get any responses from them miss levey had sent me an email verifying that the receipt of subpoena was sent all right miss levey it was sent i see it in court view but no one's here Excuse me? We yeah, subpoenaed and then, CPS and... Okay, and forgive me. I'm sorry. But a subpoena normally has the force of court. So, but right. you don't have them here, but the subpoenas were verified. Did either party, did either of these people get back to you? I Ms. had LeVay. no No, forgive me i'm asking miss levey because sometimes they notify the court you know we give credibility for them being on vacation you know sometimes they don't control when they get called in for a hearing um but absent a vacation or some excuse miss levey did anybody contact you no one reached out to me i haven't heard from anyone i did try to email miss hayes and appear she's out of the office Excuse me, but I think that the court needs to hear from both CPS and that's one of the reasons we adjourned this. I, so you, I don't know about but the CPS, But as far but as I, the court is concerned, the subpoenas were validly given. I, I don't know about given. I just see them docked in the court system. And that's validly? Yeah. I wanted to get you through to you two through this. Because they were validly subpoenaed, I don't want to issue a bench warrant for their presence. But what the court is going to do now is to ensure that they can both be here. Forgive me, Mr. Richardson. Forgive me, Ms. Gonzalez-Dean. But that's unusual. Normally, if a subpoena is issued, the parties show, especially if they're state workers. Yeah, I can't imagine why a state worker wouldn't show. I mean, I just subpoenaed Courtney for a job, so I completely understand how 
basically. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Um, I'm confused myself. I've been been doing this for 18 years. I can see and, it on your face, man. <laughs> yeah, and well, you know, if if somebody subpoenas a worker, they generally contact us and say, "Hey, I'm on vacation that week," or "I'm sorry, I already have an appointment. Can we reschedule?" And we reschedule for their ability. So at this point in time, I'm going to valid because I can't. The court can ask, but how we ask is you, we have you subpoena them. Okay, because the court can call a witness, but we call it through you. You've done that, Ms. Gonzalez Dean. Mm -hmm. So the court is going to issue statements or issue requests to both parties to honor your subpoenas. Otherwise, I may have no choice but to issue a bench warrant, which means they will be here. I don't like to do that to state workers. They have too many things to do. And, you know, sometimes screw ups happen, but we need them. And Ms. Gonzalez Dean, you appropriately called them. So the court should not issue an opinion until we hear from them. Mr. Richardson, you presented your witnesses. Is there anyone else you'd like to present? Um, there's really no one else on present. Other than All right. You just have a closing statement to some. Sure. Yeah, just to clarify some. some issues that I've seen recurring that Shane has been asking, one of them being about right. counseling, if I may right. real quick. Certainly. So as regard to counseling, I am officially in a counseling program. Um, I've got paperwork Good. that shows it's starting and everything. Well, just make sure that Shana knows that who the counselor is and if she needs to contact them. The counselor may... They're at the... Uh, sorry to interrupt again. Um, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, I have ADD, so my mind goes like that. Um, it's actually so the does counseling mine. office in the building in White Cloud that she works at. All right. Family Health Care so, she still works Okay, there. so... Shana, if you care to, you know, Tim, if, if you please would tell her who the counselor is. Shana, you can reach out to the counselor. The counselor may tell you I don't need any input. Um, I but, don't have the paper on the top of my head, and I'm bad with names, but I can see if it's in the backpack. Um, no, it's in my old backpack. Uh, no problem. Get it, her, get, get it to her. Get it to her off the record. It's okay. I Look. will. I will email it to her. All right. Yes, yeah, Shana. Um, we have our family wizard, but he has not been present on it since March. Okay, we'll get get back on it, Timothy. For it. I didn't have the money. I have. I will be doing that all right. now. I'm filing the reports to do it for the. All right, uh, hold on, history. Tim. What's your current income? My current income is about four or five hundred dollars a week. Okay, Shana, what's yours? It's about the same. All right, I will issue an order next week that indicates that neither one of you have to pay. I can obviate the cost of my family wizard for one year. What if I've already paid it? Do you get another year? <laughs> would that help? <laughs> yes, that would help a lot, sir. All right. I, I All I'm trying to do is help you get through this. Yeah. I, I and just and I'm trying to it. make sure that everything is okay for the kids. All right? Yeah, I've been... The, the reason I don't have it is, like I said, I kind of, you know, restarted life. Right. And I will issue an order that says my family wizard's costs are obviated for one year. And for what both would be, like, parties. Sent to me for me to figure out how to follow through with that? Or... I'm going to send you an order. I believe you have to file the order with my family wizard. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew what I had to do on my Understood. End. I'm Again, I'm just trying to help you guys through this. I Let's really, get I really this so that, that both of you are involved with your children. I just want right. to see my daughter again and have her see her family, her whole family. Yeah. Her. You know, your daughter, up, you need, know, your daughter needs best. both of you. You did screw up. I'm not going to lie. I know I did. I, 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 I know you haven't time. lied, but we've got to move through this. The question is how and how to do safely and for the best interest of your daughter. Okay. It's got to be slow at the start or nothing for a while. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, it's I know. At some point. So I will issue a order on Monday indicating that my family wizard fees are waived for one year. They may give you a, a refund, Ms. Gonzalez Dean. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I know they've told me I have that ability. They ask that I do not use it that often. Well, keep it coming. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, I get it. You Mark know. this on your calendar and next year just uh, do it again. Yeah, well, I, you know, I understand. You know, I'd love to tell you you don't have to pay taxes either, but I don't have that authority. Darn. I'd love to I'd love to tell me I don't have to pay taxes. One but of the this, few things are guaranteed in life. Uh, yep, yeah, that and death. Uh, but the Supreme Court has issued an opinion that says, um, you know, pay as little tax as legal as you possibly can. 
A lot of us use different words than that. You can the, you, you can mm, the IRS as much as possible as long as it's legal. Uh, so, but if I can help you with that and avoid costs, you can spend more money on your child. That's what's important. But uh, Ms. Gonzalez Dean, we will try and get the FOC. We will try and make those subpoenas happen. Okay. I'd love to give you another date. But I want to make sure that they're available because I want to hear from them because I want to make sure that this decision is done appropriately. Thank you very much. So we'll get to that and we'll have another hearing. Unfortunately, I was hoping to end this today and then make an opinion in the next week or so because I love to get these things done. But in any event, take care, ladies and gentlemen, and stay safe. And we will try and get this moved along as soon as possible.